Hello and Yaate relatives. Um, my name is Nijoni Begay, um, and our panel today is titled Water Protectors Are Real Life Superheroes. I'm joined um, with Red Planet slash Native Realities, um, Lee Francis, and also two um, people from the Water Protector Legal Collective, our executive director, Leola Cowboy, and our community liaison, Jaden Cowboy. Um, and so I work at Red Planet and the Water Projector Legal Collective. Um, Native Realities is um, going to be publishing our to be named graphic anthology centering the work of Indigenous water protectors. Um, and WPLC is providing uh, the legal terminology and support around, around that and for that. Um, I wanted to start by thanking everybody for being here, thanking the earth, thanking the water, thanking our ancestors and our family who made all of this possible. Um, it's a beautiful time to share our work, even virtually. Um, so yeah, I wanted to start just really quickly to introduce everybody. Um, uh, what is Native Realities, Lee, and what do you do at Red Planet? Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you. And uh, everybody. Uh, my name is Lee Francis. I got a lovely intro. Um, and I am the CEO and founder of Red Planet Books and Comics and uh, our publishing arm, our publishing imprint, which is Native Realities, uh, which we founded in 2014. Uh, and then sort of just kept building things. And we built it in an indigenous comic book convention and and uh, Red Planet Books and Comics, which is the only native comic shop in the world, uh, which I have the sincere honor and pleasure to host. Um, so yeah, Native Realities, uh, we publish graphic novels, games, toys, uh, and collectibles uh, that position native and indigenous peoples at the forefront of popular culture um, or or very much try to put us, maybe not at the forefront, but try to put us into a space where we are represented, um, not as historical, uh, you know, uh, stereotypes or, or historical anachronisms, but uh, vibrant, dynamic indigenous peoples doing really cool things in, in this modern, uh, amazing era. So um, we've been at it for about six years and we got some really cool stuff and we got some great things on the horizon, <laughs> this comic uh that's going to be coming out so uh really excited thank you for for uh connecting up with us and and being able to chat about this work awesome um yeah and if leola um could you talk a little bit about what is the water protector legal collective where did that come from and what do we do <laughs> Yeah, yes, a Leola Kabuyanisha. What's up, relatives? Hello, relatives. Um, yeah, so what is Water Protector Leo Collective? I was just like trying to think about that and think, wow, there's so much we do. But um, so we were born, the organization was born out of the No Daffle um, occupation camp in Standing Rock, North Dakota in 2016. I personally wasn't there, so I get to hear these stories. Um, I was um, there, but not in the legal tent. So I did kind of see what was going on and was very familiar with the work that they were doing. So that's how this whole organization, group of relatives came together and um, started doing the criminal legal cases for the water protectors that were being arrested during that movement. Um, and it's been an interesting journey. I started back in 2016. So maybe like a year after um, the organization came about. And so a lot of what we do, um, no, everything we do, oh my gosh, came out of a prayer. There's, there was some very 
um, sacred prayers made by very specific people. And we are that prayer, every single one of us here today and so many more um, did such incredible work to pave a way for us as indigenous people, indigenous women, BIPOC to do this work. And um, I'm really very humbled that I'm able to do this work. And I am not a lawyer, by the way, every time someone hears about Water Protector Legal Collective, they're like, oh, you're a lawyer. No, I'm not a lawyer. Um, that's what's so great about this organization. Um, so like, if you're interested in legal support, legal work, and how all of that looks like we're, and you're indigenous, and you want brown people to show you like, what's up in the legal world, we're it, we're there. Um, so I'm, I, I think it's just been an amazing journey to see how I started in this organization, but also like where it's at today. And it's an amazing place to be. Um, and I'm just really grateful for that. Um, I forgot what your question was too. That was, that, that answered <laughs> it perfectly. Um, yeah, Jaden, I want to know um, the work that you do at WPLC and the work that you've done previously, um, because you're so awesome. So if you could just talk a little bit about that. Yes, uh, Yat Ed, Jaden Cowboy, nice to meet you all. I am Afro Indigenous, um, Indigenous person from Zanetta, Navajo Nation. And I've done a lot of community work and just been part of like active in my community because we have, as we all know, we all do a lot of different injustices and just different things throughout our communities and just getting fed up and getting tired of it and not seeing any representation or any being things done for us that we should have and have all this empowerment in different like positive ways of living. So just taking that on in our sense and just I've been doing that since my youth and can really see, you know, kind of an obligation. It's just something I'd be doing whether it's here or any other life. So definitely blessed and grateful for like all of my community members, my teammates, and like all the walks of life bringing me to this moment. Definitely very blessed and humbled to be doing this work for my people. And I've been, I definitely, I was out there in the ND and took, definitely had my moments in that space and was blessed to be out there in that land and be able to participate in setting up what's right. And as of now, I work for, I'm the communication legal liaison for um, WPLC. I've worked with them in the past, however, as a paralegal and just, and volunteer and just um, done a lot of different work that just happened to happen. And now trying to move forward in different ways in our world of like taking on a more space to actually build um, and fit our needs for the community now versus just being born out of the movement because as we know that's just entails so much going on and a lot of state cases came out of that a lot of federal cases a couple of a few cases federal cases came out of that but now we're actually in a space to move forward and really like fit needs of our community and be there and show up on the front lines whether that's you know in North Dakota now that uh, Keystone pipeline has been dismantled now we can move forward and try to help other movements on the ground whether it's line three and then so Soda or it's out in Hawaii, all these different places. So that's just uh, a little of my work. We're trying to move forward and do like some know your rights trainings and just get people on the ground involved and aware and understand their rights and how to empower themselves legally versus shying away from the legal system as like many people do. So that answers the question. <laughs> yeah, awesome, thank you. Um, I guess, first of all, uh, whenever I explain our project to people, they're like, how did you even think about, you know, merging comic books uh, or a graphic anthology um, with, you know, water protectors? How did that, how did that happen? Yeah, I'll, I'll lead off. I think it was, you know, after... Well, one, I always think about, for me, I always think about how do we tell stories in a graphic style? So I'm constantly thinking about how comic books, you know, how we can tell the story of, of indigenous folks in comic, 
in, in a comic book format or a sequential art format because there's just not enough out there in the world, quite frankly. Like we just don't, I, I'm waiting for, you know, the moments when there's just shelves upon shelves upon shelves, of just like indigenous comics, right? And I know it's coming. We're getting more and more, right? So this is, so this one was, I had this idea coming off of Standing Rock and I remember watching you know, I didn't, I wasn't up as a part of it, but I had a lot of relatives that were, and I had a lot of, you know, kin and family that, that, that took the trip to be a part of this movement. And I was following it on social media and, and, um, and the way that I tend to respond is, okay, well, how do we then tell this story? It's not, as, not as a documentary, um, not as a, you know, something that, that, not as an archive, not as a journalist space, because th some of the stuff that was coming out from even the journalist sides just were, were also they kind of made me bristle because a lot of it just continued to feed a narrative of native tragedy right so so you know this this fetishization of native tragedy that we see in american pop culture representations of native people which is always the dead or dying indian and so the images that were coming out that were totally different than what i was seeing on my facebook feed it, what I'm seeing in the, you know, like the pop culture stuff is, you know, one of our brothers on horseback and with tanks in the distance, right? And so it continued to, it continues in pop culture media and in mainstream media that this idea of like, you know, uh, it's, it's the lost cause, right? Oh, there's no way that these poor Indians are going, look, this is just like it was a hundred years ago and they're all going to die. But for their noble sacrifice, and I was like, that really kind of pissed me off, because I'm, I, I mean, that's a narrative that's just been replayed for 400 years. It was just kind of like, so I started thinking about like, how would I tell this in a comic book? What are the stories? And I started thinking about like, how can we tell this story of, you know, water protectors at Standing Rock, but also water protectors everywhere? Because that was the other part that I thought about. I was like. This isn't just a one-off. This is where the media has focused their attention. This is where communities were all able to connect with each other to network, because it was really just like a big networking opportunity with a purpose. And then what are we going to do to take back? Because I know that we've been fighting for water rights in the four corners, you know, uh, with Deneta and with Pueblo and, you know, and the alliances and things that we've made to protect our water. I know our brothers and sisters on the coast have been doing this in the Gulf Coast on the West Coast, on the East Coast. So I was like, so how do we tell that story? So I started like, you know, uh, thinking about ideas and casting out to folks that might be interested. And uh, and then just way led unto way. And we just, you know, it was like, I had a Comic-Con started and then, you know, and then, and then we were making different comics and other things were coming out. We were opening a shop and, and it just kind of like drifted more than I, I, I would really, you know, was, was, was liking. And so, um you know was contacted uh wplc was like we got this crazy you know it's like uh, let's talk about some things you know what can we do we we want to do something exciting and i was like oh i've got a project that i had to back burner for a while but i've been wanting to tell the story and let's tell it as a comic book like let's put this thing together and that was where you know so when when people will say that it was like okay well how do we create a narrative that tells these multiple stories, that tells the history of water protection from an indigenous space, and also sprinkles in all the legal stuff that we need to make this kind of like, um, I don't know, the best legal awesomeness that you're gonna have in your back pocket ever. Um, so we had a lot of things to put together, even in the initial conversations. And I was like, listen, I'm all for it. And we're really good at publishing comics. And we're really good at working with folks. And we got a lot of native people that we know that can make something really awesome. And um, so let's do it. And that's how I met you, Najoni. It, uh, it was just, I put out, I was like, I need a project coordinator. I need someone to pull this together. And you were like, all, all right, I, I saw you doing nerd stuff. Uh, you look like a pretty cool nerd. I'll come on board. So that's how, that's how it started. That's how it came together. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Um, and Leola or Jaden, and you know, just a WPLC perspective, like what do we hope for this graphic anthology? How do we want to one, like honor our relatives, but also um, have this resource? I can take that if you want. 
honestly, like it started really organically, right? It started from conversation and just from a need and from our own personal experiences, seeing all of our communities and just different people around go through the struggle and just always kind of have that sort of, sort of defense from the legal, perspe uh, legal perspective and legal side of it, just because of all the experiences, you know, that are probably very shared and they're not always um, very pleasant ones if ever, you know, it's very rare. So getting together and actually having these conversations and art being such a universal thing and accessible that connects us and really bonds us just along like as we already are bonded as communal people and getting to actually add the legal source in it and getting to see the legal aspect of it and how versus shying away from it and actually going towards it is a really powerful tool and it's something that we can all truly utilize to not only um, move ourselves in a better way but to hold these entities and these other counterparts accountable you know, in whatever that way looks like and setting precedent for the future, whatever that looks like, whether it's this movement here or elsewhere, but each each step counts and each step matters. So I feel us coming together truly was a prayer and a blessing to be able to like, not only create like these networks and spaces together, and like trusted people, but also to like really build and to put something out there that's not only uh, great and really awesome to look at, but also really easy and accessible for anybody to just like have and utilize and understand and try to like help whatever we're trying to move forward in a good way, because that's our intention, you know, to just do things in a good way, whether we're, what, no matter where we're at and where, who we're with, as long as we're like doing it in a good way together and connected and our best intention forward. So I think that's what we're doing and we're super blessed to be in this spot. So super grateful to be here talking about this so excited <laughs> yeah it really is very exciting um and I think you know we're also so impassioned to um you know want to tell these people's stories uh our and you know in our own community storytelling is so powerful in itself you know this is how we pass on um traditional knowledge and to have you know to have this medium of of, um, you know, that's this like written thing that is, you know, heavily, you know, non-Indigenous, heavily white dominated. Um, and to be able to take that and say, you know, we're going to tell our story. Um, we're going to tell the stories of the people that we've met along the way. We're going to tell the stories of even the people that we don't know, but we know that are doing this important work. Like, that's so beautiful. Um, and yeah, I... I, I the, the last thing that my last final question, um, and then maybe we have like a little surprise at the end. Um, so what are some things that people can be doing from home, um, you know, wherever they are watching this panel to support water protectors in the meantime and in, the, in like the anticipation of um, our graphic novel, graphic anthology, excuse me. Um, honestly, there's a lot you can do, like starting from a community point, you can definitely just like look around, like try to get in touch with what's going on in your communities, because no doubt, like these fights are connected, like globally, communally, nationally, like all of us are super, super on the same page, and we should be connected and should be holding space for each other, because then we'd be making such powerful moves, you know, we already are, but just like having that abundance is so different, but Honestly, you could also be looking at movements that are going around that have been going on for a long time, like Keystone that just passed, like this has been going on for decades, like this has been a fight that's been going on and continuing and it's just going to continue as these corporations continue to push these, whatever these cons like consumptive pro uh, projects forward, you know, where it's not done and it's still, still an on battle, especially with like Line three, right? Line three, you could be see what's going on in Minnesota, be looking online and contributing through donations, contributing through calling and calling the people locally and asking about this and uh, opposing against these things. You could do that for pretty much any movement that's going on. There's there's a lot to do, but mostly it's like getting in touch, looking online and seeing what's happening. Also like um, nationally, because these, these projects tend to run through directly connect through states. So 
there's there's different opportunities but yes looking online and actually contributing to that whether it's actually paying attention or if it's giving donations or if it's giving funds or just prayers and sending putting medicine down you know and putting thoughts and good energy towards them any type of attention is really important to actually move something forward in a better better way a better direction i believe i don't know if anyone else wants to add anything to that <laughs> Yeah, Lola, I would really love to hear um, what you think, especially like non-Indigenous people can be doing and should be doing during this time. Um, I really looked up to you as a mentor, so I, oh, I'm, always, I'm always looking to hear that. Yeah, I'm just like, oh my gosh, should I be gentle? How should I talk to these group of folks? Um, no, like people need to step up, right? Like I'm a, I'm a daughter, I'm a sister, I'm an auntie, you know, I'm a grandmother and I am very much worried, concerned about us as a humanity and how we treat our everyone but humans. Like, and I'm talking about our animals, like the living earth itself, the water and on that note, um, as indigenous, as an indigenous woman from my Diné nation, just so close by, um, people really need to look at where they're at, at, at this moment, at any moment and see whose original homelands you're sitting upon, right? There's no denial you like, you're sitting, you're sitting in someone else's homelands. And what that means to us as indigenous people is that is our whole livelihood. We base so much on our land, like everything's around the land, prayers, ceremony, like you name it, it's all on our land and the water. And it's so vitally important at this moment for everybody to step up because just by recycling and having your little, you know, um, carbon um, straws, like that's not enough. Like we are in a seriously crucial time right now and people need to step up and whoever's homeland you're on, get to work, man, get to work because you're thriving upon our indigenous bloodshed. We're missing so many of our ancestors because that land was taken from us vitally. I mean, like brutally, brutally in a horror, like the most horrible way. Like we're just hearing about all of these indigenous children up North being found in residential schools. Like that's what, that's what people are doing to us to take our land from us, right? So this is the moment, like people need to step up. If you are like, I don't wanna even say like, if you're in a financially set area, you should give your land back. No, give it back, really. You have a homeland. And that needs to be recognized. Like we want our land back and this is what we're doing. Like we, there's so many of us involved that we all have our own specialty and it's so exciting like to get up and be like, hey, I can offer this legal advice to you all or maybe not legal advice, but um, so people need to step up, give our land back. That's always going to be my number one answer or like that's it. Give our land back, find out whose land you're on. And there's so many different ways to do it. There's a bunch of resources online, how to figure that out, like how to do it from an indigenous like perspective. Um, but in every circle you're in, always acknowledge the indigenous land you stand upon. Like it takes all of us to do this work. It's gonna take all of us to get our land back, right? We don't know how that looks. We I've never done that before. So we have to stay in community. We have to be in kinship with one another. Like I consider all of you, my family, like we're all relatives. So let's do this together. If capitalism took over that quick, we can dismantle it. So there's a lot to do. Like feel free to reach out, hit up my IG at Leola, L-E-O-Y-L-A. Let's do this. <laughs> I'm like so set, I'm so set, like I have so many ideas. Like I just recently took a trip and I yeah. just bloomed yeah. from that trip. So 
I'm so excited to move forward. But money, yeah. of course, money, right? Like give up your money. <laughs> I know there's some expensive comic books out there. Like, yo, sell it, give it to us, give us that money or give us that really expensive comic book. I know you're like, oh my God, what is she you're, saying? No, it is totally worth it. Stuff. I was gonna say, <laughs> that's literally what I was gonna say. I was gonna be like, how can you help is like support, like buy, like literally buy comics, right? Like, I'm not even gonna say like, okay, obviously buy this comic because it's coming out, keep an eye out for it. But you know, part but, of it's, yeah. it's the support, right? It's the support that we need activist it comics it's there's always. some really great you know publishers out there that are doing incredible you know activist work there was even during yes. was the you know occupy they had the occupy comics that came out uh similar type of framework that we have where we're telling these stories remember mm -hmm. these stories maybe you can't do some of this stuff maybe you ain't got money well then go tell a story your 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 presence here is to tell these yeah. stories these are, this is an obligation from it. my perspective. This is an obligation, right? My obligation in publishing is to take these stories and put them into this space. And, and maybe we, you know, we're going to kind of fictionalize them. We'll, we'll add some, you know, superheroes and some other stuff, but these stories need to be told. And these are the stories of people mm -hmm. that are like, literally like, you know, they're, they're trying to stop your water from being poisoned. I mean, that's, that's what we're trying to do. Like this shouldn't, this is not a binary. This is like, oh yeah, we kind of need clean water because there's nothing. I was like, you know, we don't we don't need Dasani, uh, you know, running our spaces, right? Like, we need we need the, the water that comes down from the mountain. We need the water that comes from the ground. We need to be we all need to be water protectors. So, yeah, my thing is y'all like that's my thing. But I think exactly what you're saying, Lola is basically coming and saying like, yo, what we can do is all be water protectors. Right, we can all be water protectors. Take the mantle. Yeah, if you want to learn more about it? Get this comic. You you don't want to get this comic? Look online. You ain't got yeah. the time for it. That's fine. Do something. We can all be water protectors, and this is the anthem. This is the call that we're putting out there through art and through stories and through all these incredible women, native women that I'm on this Brady Bunch screen with right now. So, <laughs> thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Um, oh. Well, thank you for for joining um, and giving us, you know, the space to to share this knowledge. Um, I just wanted to, you know, quickly say that um, water protectors, they really are our real life superheroes. Indigenous people have been stewarding this land like like since the, since the beginning, you know, since before, you know, people came here before capitalism, before, you know, all, all of this, we live in matriarchal society. So yeah, before the patriarchy was in this land. Um, so I, I, I wanted to just quickly go around and, you know, say why, why indigenous um, people, indigenous water protectors are real life superheroes to you. And then, and then we'll log off. So we can start with um, with Lee. Oh, you just talked, but sorry. I will. That's all right. Then we'll just circle back around. It's perfect. We just we do little. It's all circles, right? It's all circles and spirals <laughs> for native folks. Um, yeah. Uh, it's a why question, right? It's it's the why. Uh, the why question. Why uh, are water protectors superheroes? Um, because they're the ones that are. Uh, you know, defending something greater than themselves for the benefit of all the people. And for me, it's not even superheroes. It goes back to, I mean, it is superheroes, but it's our hero stories. It's our traditional stories that our heroes, the ones that fought monsters, were the ones that did what they did and sacrificed themselves on behalf of all the people. And that is why water protectors are, have, you know, they come from a long line of heroes from our stories from way back. 100%. Um, Lola, if you want to answer the question, why are water protectors real life superheroes? Yeah, that's pretty easy for me. That's one sentence. Um, why are water protectors superheroes? Because they physically, 
mentally, spiritually put their bodies on the line, directly in, on the line. And yeah, I'll always say, um, you know, our no doubtful political prisoners are superheroes and definitely, you know, all the water protectors too that um, were on the front lines of Danny Rock and Line 3 and everywhere else. Um, it's amazing to protect my grandchildren's future and those I'm not going to meet. And that's, that's why I do this to ensure that they will have clean water. Oh my gosh, I don't want them to buy water. It's so terrible. Um, yeah. Awesome. And yeah, Leola was talking about, you know, how she um, came from this trip. We were just um, at line three, um, supporting the work that indigenous activists, water protectors are doing there. Um, and it was really inspirational, beautiful. Um, it gave me a, a boost of energy, you know, in the work that we're, we're doing. Um, even, you know, even in this comic book, um, even in, uh, you know, these spaces that don't seem directly as, you know, connected to this direct action, but it, it is. Um, and yeah, Jaden, if you want to answer the question, why are water protectors real life superheroes? I would love to hear your answer. Yeah, I gotta say that's like super easy for me to honestly, there's some of the most, most fearless, fierce, down, badass beings like walks like in this walk of life I've ever had the like the pleasure to to not only experience and like share and actually have a lot of beautiful uh, connections and experiences from that, but also they literally uh, are ancestors prayers literally and it is such a powerful thing and sometimes just sit and watch in awe to see how strong and how protective and how how powerful we truly are as you know as these beings as indigenous people and how at, we'll stop at nothing to do what we know is right which we know to our core to our spirit which is to protect all walks of life, whether that's the land, whether that's the, the fit, like every walk of life, you think of the air, the earth, all above and all around us, you know, our answers that came before us, that are kind of behind us, that are beside us. We're doing this work that we, doing this way of life that we know is just, just we know is an obligation and that we know is what we're supposed to be doing. And it's just such a gift and blessing to be able to not only like walk some these powerful beings but it's also like just their connections with all of you so feel super blessed and like empowered and refreshed to move forward and like to continue to be community members and to share that build that kinship and build that community and keep like making powerful moves these prayers like i've literally it's like you see miracles you know like we are literally majestic beings so it's just an honor to be here and walk with all of you honestly Thank you, Ahyehe. Um, and thank you, all of you who are joining us and listening to us and sharing this space. Um, follow Red Planet, books and comics on social media, the Water Protector Legal Collective on social media. Um, stay connected. Look, be looking out for the soon to be named um, Water Protector Graphic Anthology. We took a lot of time and effort and um, prayer to, to, to make this a uh, resource and to make this, um, to tell these stories of these important people. Thank you.